So we will see if Republicans can pass the test. And if they do, Democrats should be thanking them for fixing the system that they broke. Here to discuss this Beltway battle, Anton Gunn, who was involved with implementing Obamacare, and political commentator Tommy Lauren. So we're going to start with ladies first, Tommy. What did you think of my assessment about the stakes and where we stand on health care? Well, you're absolutely right, but I think it's also important to point out, as you already did, that if we changed just one word of Obamacare, the Democrats would tell us that we were killing people. So that's, you know, up front, let's be honest about the narrative right. here. But beyond that, we should repeal Obamacare, replace it with liberty, and then we should all have a great Fourth of July. Everybody can celebrate freedom on the 4th of July, but the Democratic Party, Anton, does not like freedom. They don't like choice when it comes to health care. They like choice when it comes to everything else on their platform. Uh, why does the Democratic Party dislike giving the American people more choice in selecting health care coverage? Well, the Affordable Care Act gave people choice. No, it didn't. And you both are completely wrong about the Senate proposal and the House proposal. Any proposal that takes health insurance coverage from 22 million people that already has it is a bad idea. That's not choice. That's a disaster. But, Anton, you know if you're not mandating people through taxation to sign up for Obamacare, people aren't going to do that. They're going to have the freedom to decide whether or not they want health care or not. Well, I want them to have health care because I don't want my insurance bills to be significantly high because they choose to abjugate their responsibility from having health insurance coverage. But so everyone's health care bills are already thing. high after Obamacare was passed. Premiums are skyrocketing, and there's not a lot of choice, Tommy. If you look at some of these states like Iowa, for instance, there's only one option for people to choose from. How do you see the health care bill going down? Well, yeah, and it's projected next year, 44 counties will have no choice at all. So we are in a death spiral right now. I don't think that, you know, there's any question to that. And this whole narrative of the Democrats keep pushing about how we're killing people, we're taking away health care. Let's not forget the biggest lie of all, which was told by their anointed one, President Barack Obama, that if you like your insurance, you can keep it. Yeah, we need to fix something here. Like I said, repeal now, replace later, but let's do something because this is not working. Anton, do the Democrats have any substantive policy input that they actually think the Republican Party might go along with? Well, that depends, because we had substantive policy input for six years when President Obama was president. But guess what? The Congress had no interest in trying to improve health care and make it better. So I don't think they're really interested in listening to good ideas. They just want to repeal the Affordable Care Act and give uh, the opportunity to say that they've won something and take health insurance coverage from 22 million people. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't agree with the last part, but I do agree. I, I don't think either party wants their fingerprints on a doomed bill, no matter whose party it is. I want to get to Susan Rice. So we remember Susan Rice, the national security advisor under the Obama administration. Now she's been slapped with subpoenas and she's going to testify on Capitol Hill in this unmasking investigation, looking into unmasking of Trump officials, which is uh, not supposed to be political. Um, those names were leaked and that is a crime. Uh, she's playing the race and gender card, Tommy, saying uh, she might be being targeted because of her race and gender. Do you think that's a, uh, a fair assessment? Uh, it's amazing to me how they always seem to be able to pull out these cards. Look at most of the people that are being investigated. Look at what our president has to go through on a daily basis, and he's a white male. It has nothing to do with race and gender. It has a lot to do, though, with Susan Rice herself. You know, the moment that you parade around talking points and you blame a terrorist attack on a YouTube video, you lose a lot of credibility. It has nothing to do with being a female. It has nothing to do with your race. It has a lot to do with being a liar. Anton, respond to that, because Susan Rice has been embroiled, like Tommy said, in the Benghazi situation. She said it was about a video. She said Bo Bergdahl, a deserter, served with honor and distinction and was captured on the battlefield, then kind of changed her story in public about the unmasking. Does, does Susan Rice have any credibility when she goes in front of these senators and congressmen on Capitol Hill? She has a lot of credibility. She served under two presidents in a national security role. And I can tell you clearly, to me, she has more credibility than Michael Flynn had as a national security advisor. All right. Well, we will see. And uh, I think everybody is going to want to see if Susan Rice raises her hand and pleads the fifth, because that would be pretty interesting. Anton, Tommy, thank you very much.